Okay, so in this video, um, we're going to refine the 2.7 ounces of silver that we recovered from that flatware. That's the um, five pounds of flatware video. And you can see my proprietary solution that I've been working on. Look at it. That's yellow brass. That was silver plated. So I did what I needed to do. My, my solution, it strips the silver completely from the substrate without attacking the underlying substrate. Now in that jar, um, that's a little more chloride um, that was recovered from another two pounds I, I had. I went ahead and stripped that. Uh, that's the silver I recovered. So as we go through this process, I'll, I'll add that in and uh, we'll refine that. Now there's the metal we're actually gonna be working with. Uh, like I said, that's 2.7 ounces. It is not pure. It, it is probably, As much as this as I've done, all we have done is, is recover so far. It's probably no better than 60%. So we're going to dissolve that to try to separate some of the impurities uh, chemically. Uh, normally, you would use nitric acid to do that. I'm waiting on mine to get in. I just reopened, so I, I use sulfuric. Now we're done. This is what it looks like. Time to filter. So if, if you're a refiner following along, always add acid to water never add water to acid especially sulfuric acid because it reacts very violently with water if you were to pour water into that sulfuric it, it would flash boil it would explode it would be painful it, it would it would be a mess notice how slowly i'm pouring that in look at the steam coming off that is steam from the heat that is generated that is that is near boiling that's how much heat is generated and I poured it really slow. Okay, add a little bit more water in. Now you can add in water because it's it's so dilute. Okay, whatever that stuff is, that's that's what didn't dissolve. Yeah, that's still really hot. So we'll let that settle and then filter it off. Okay, here we go. So do, do you see the sidearm? The, the little deal coming off the side of the, the flask. Um, that is actually a vacuum flask. You can get a rubber donut and put it around the neck of that filter and then set that inside the, the neck of the flask. And then you hook a vacuum line up to that port and you can, you can vacuum filter everything much, much, well, it's, it's, it's not only is it a lot faster, but it does a much better job of filtering. It helps pull, all the dissolved impurities through and it gets it a lot cleaner so here i gotta so sometimes you have to let your filter pack so to speak it's, it's like when you first pour your stuff in um whatever you're trying to filter out will get through but then the filter packs and then it's only clear liquid and then you can you can rinse it out pour it back into the filter like you just saw now we're getting clear solution it's, it's not perfectly clear, but, but I, I think we're okay. I think we're all right. Vacuum pump is on the list. Building a refinery from scratch here. Next thing I got to build is a fume hood, a fume scrubber, an electrolytic silver refining cell. I've got to build a larger furnace. All my silver filters from my first refining, 10 years worth of them are all packed away in five gallon buckets tons of silver in there to go get. There we go. Now, now I'm pouring it back through the filter the second time. Now we'll get clean, clear liquid. Yeah, it takes a while with gravity. Gravity generates a lot more water because you don't you don't have the vacuum to pull it through. Okay, here's one of my favorite parts. We're gonna precipitate the silver. And there's there's two ways that you can do this. You can do a chemical precipitation uh, where you add in um, a salt 
In this case, you could you I'm just using table salt. You could add in hydrochloric acid or any other type of a chloride, and uh, and that would work. But uh, I, I use table salt. The other method is called displacement. Um, most most other refiners would use copper to uh, uh, displace the silver. It, it's called the metal reactivity series, and it's it's kind of like a, a pecking order of who can kick who out of a compound. Um, some metals are more reactive, some are less reactive. Um, a more reactive metal can push a less reactive metal out of the compound. Uh, copper is more reactive than silver. Silver does not corrode easily, it does not tarnish easily, that's why we value it. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's less reactive. So if you put the more reactive copper or even something like zinc or don't, don't use aluminum, that's too reactive. Um, but, but most guys use copper. The reason I don't is because one, copper takes a long time. I, I wouldn't be able to precipitate this at this rate. I mean, that was instantaneous. Copper, I'd, I'd have to let it sit all night. And copper is $4 a pound. I, I want to sell that copper. I don't, I don't want to put it in a solution where I can't get it back out into sellable form. I, I want to sell it and make money on it. Um, so it just never made it made sense to me to use copper when I can use a few pennies of table salt and uh, some sodium hydroxide. And, and, and you know, I'm not, I've got to reduce the silver salt. True. True. I have to reduce the silver salt displacing with copper. Uh, it does produce pure silver metal, but no thanks. I'll take that $4 a pound and I'll make $4 a pound on it. We'll just let that let that all sit overnight. One challenge every every refiner faces is keeping the spray bottle full. Every time you turn around, you got to put more money in the spray bottle, right, more water. All right, good morning, campers. Hey, last so last night precipitated all of the all of the silver chloride. And I mixed in um, the silver chloride from another lot that I had going on. So what we want to do now, this stuff out of the way, we're just going to decant all of this. Not even going to use a filter. Anything that's on the top, we will catch it later. We'll just let that stuff settle in the bottom and we will catch all of that later. This one didn't have very much in it, doesn't look like. still cleaning but we're starting to refine because this silver has got to be very very pure this is going to start um, rather this will be turned into the electrolyte for my silver refining cell right now we're using an electrolytic cell to strip the silver off from plated items. The next thing I'm going to do is build a silver refining cell and that is going to refine the silver. There. Get a little bit better grip on that now. Uh, you know what I think? Let me just move this out of the way. There we go. Kind of 
have taken me a minute to get back into um, refining. Look at all that. Look at how quickly that settles. Really clean, white solution, clear solution rather. Okay, so let me uh, move some of this stuff out of the way here. Okay, that can now settle. Right, um, give me a minute. I need to change my configuration around whenever I'm gonna use the heat and acids, I gotta move it out the door so that way uh, my acids don't accumulate. So give me a minute, we'll swap this around and keep going. That was collected. Um, I boiled it in water. That, that's gonna dry, that's gonna clear out, clean out um, any of the sulfates that were left. I also use an excess of, of table salt when I'm precipitating so that that water boil is also gonna get rid of that, that excess salt and not leave that behind. Um, the standard process for, for cleaning silver chloride like this is to boil it in the water and then boil it in hydrochloric acid and then I'll boil it in water again and filter it off and that water should get rid of the, the rest of the hydrochloric acid because after this, we're, we're going to reduce this silver chloride back into uh, metallic silver. So... Um, what happened there? I didn't let the solution cool before filtering it, and it, it it broke the filter. So that's all right. Add some water in. Okay, so here I'm adding in sodium hydroxide. That's a strong base. What it does? Here's the chemistry that's happening. The sodium hydroxide is dissolving the table salt, leaving the silver behind. Watch here in a minute, it'll turn, it'll turn black. See, see how gray that is now? This, the, the salt's almost gone and just the silver. There, watch. Just there, did you see it turn black? Now I add in corn syrup. That's sugar. That's, that's a, a reducing agent. It's the glucose. The glucose reacts with the hydroxide and it reduces that, that silver oxide down to metallic silver. And you can see how it looks like a nasty soup there now. It just looks like a nasty swamp. Watch, watch when I pour it through. See how it's that nasty brown color. Um, what, it, it's okay. There, there were no more impurities in the silver. It, um, I, I use an excess of glucose. And when I mix it with the hydroxide, it generates a lot of heat. It's, it's just burnt sugar, literally. It's just burnt sugar. We, we can pour that off, filter it off. Watch. Just keep letting that filter off. There's the silver. You can see at the bottom of that flask, a little bit got through. We'll pour it into that jar and let it silt, uh, settle. We'll catch it, catch it later. It, it wasn't very much. We just scooped that out by hand. You don't have vacuum, man. You do anything to save water because it's like you, you have to rinse so many times without vacuum. It, it generates a lot of lot of waste. That water adds up. So here we go. Moment of truth. Put this on a scale. There we go. Looks about like it did when it went in. 1.515. So we went from 2.7 ounces down to 1.5, and we added in a little bit extra from those other two pounds. But that was a, a mixed lot. It had some silver, some standard plates, some inlaid, a little bit of double, a little bit of triple plate, but mostly, mostly uh, just single plated flatware. So 
man, that's how we do it. Um, I will not melt this. I'm, I'm waiting for my nitric to get in. I'll redissolve it in nitric and I will use this as the electrolyte for my electrolytic refining cell that I'm going to build next. All right. Thanks for checking it out, guys. See you next time.